Hello and welcome to the news on Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation for his appointments as Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister and stressed his keenness to work beside His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to serve the kingdom and its people. He affirmed that the people of Bahrain are the basis for the development march of the country. His Royal Highness also congratulated His Majesty the King on forming the new cabinet and wish the government further progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. He affirmed keenness to continue the work and achieve the visions of His Majesty the King in order to achieve further accomplishments for the country and its people, which goes according to the National Action Charter to build a better future for the kingdom under the principles of justice, sustainability and competitiveness that fall within the economic vision of 2030. His Royal Highness wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness and for the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 61 forming the new cabinet after the issuance of Royal Order 56 of 2018 regarding appointing His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa as the Prime Minister as well as appointing members of the cabinet. The order stipulates the appointment of the following. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Jawad bin Salam Al Arayyad, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa as Deputy Prime Ministers, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Mutawwa as Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa as the Minister of Interior, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Majid Al Naimi as the Minister of Education, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza as the Minister of Electricity and Water. Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa as the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as the Minister of Oil. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as the Minister of Finance and National Economy. Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf as the Minister of Forks, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning. Jamil bin Mohammed Ahmedan as the Minister of Labor and Social Development. Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed as the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications. Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar as the Minister of Housing. Ghanab bin Fadl al Bainin as the Minister of the Shura and Representatives Council's Affairs. Faiqa bin Saeed al Saleh as the Minister of Health. Zaid bin Rashid al Zayani as the Minister of Industry and Commerce. Ali bin Mohammed al Ramehi as the Minister of Information Affairs. Major General Abdullah Hassan al Naimi as the Minister of Defense. Ayman Tawfiq al Mu'ayyad as the Minister of Youth and Sports. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, marking the formation of the new cabinet. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished the new government the best under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to achieve the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the interests of Bahrain and its people. He also expressed honor for his reappointment to accomplish the comprehensive programs of the government in line with the development vision under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness also noted that he is honored to continue to build on what was achieved by the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and affirmed keenness to continue the close cooperation and coordination in order to effectively accomplish the government action plan objectives. He pledged his keenness on supporting foundations of implementing the government plans, programs and strategies that will result in further progress and development for the Kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished His Royal Highness the Prime Minister abundant health and happiness. In response, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in which he expressed appreciation of his noble feelings hailing his commanded efforts to promote the National Development March and achieve the initiatives of the Government Action Plan to contribute to interpreting the visions of His Majesty the King for further security, stability and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister wished Bahrain and its people further progress and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince abundant health and happiness. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received former Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs Hisham bin Mohammed Al Joda. 
His Highness praised the former minister's efforts during his tenure in the ministry, which are in line with the policies of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, which contributed in enhancing the administrative work of the ministry and its achievements in various fields. His Highness noted that Al Jodar is one of the national competencies that made remarkable achievements in the march of youth and sports and made clear efforts in implementing the policies and programs of the council according to the implementation mechanisms provided by the council, which contributed to developing the sectors supported by the ministry. The former minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness for his constant support to the ministry. He noted his keenness on implementing the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa regarding the Youth and Sports March as well as His Highness Sheikh Nasser's vision to develop the sector and implement the policies of the council. <coughs> As part of the UAE National Day celebrations, the Emirati Embassy in Bahrain organized a lecture honoring 100 years of His Highness the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan's legacy at the Sheikh Ibrahim Center for Culture and Research given by UAE Minister of State Dr. Zaki Nusaiba. More on this report with Heba Abdul Ghaffar. The year 2018 marks 100 years since the birth of the founding father of the UAE, His Highness Late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. This is why it has been declared as the Year of Zayed. A lecture was organized today by the UAE Embassy at the Sheikh Ibrahim Center for Culture and Research in the heart of Maharraqa. Celebrating his life, legacy, and the UAE's achievements based on his vision, will, and determination, which reflects the deep historic brotherly relations between Bahrain and the UAE. Testament to the deep historic brotherly relationship between the United Arab Emirates and the Kingdom of Bahrain. And it uh, talked clearly and in too much, uh, much depth about the uh, history of his, the late His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, the founder of the United Arab Emirates. We in Bahrain feel, look at Sheikh Zayed as a fatherly figure for this whole region. And we, uh, we really cherish every moment that Bahrain has worked with the UAE under our wise leaderships. The event was attended by Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities President Sheikh Hamay bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, UAE Ambassador to Bahrain Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, UN Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative for Bahrain Amin Al Sharqawi. Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies Dirasat, Board of Trustees Chairman Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalid, and a number of elite guests. UAE Minister of State Dr. Zaki Nusaiba delivered the inspiring speech, telling the story of how the UAE founding father relied on his wisdom and unflinching hard work in building a thriving and vibrant nation, a task which came with many challenges given a highly unstable regional environment. Sheikh Zayed has a special place in the heart of every Bahraini and every Arab. Today, as part of the UAE National Day celebrations, a very inspiring lecture was held about his story in Sheikh Ibrahim Cultural Center in Muharraqa. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. Under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Middle East Catalyst Technology Conference 2018 was launched, which is organized by the Euro Petroleum Consultants and Bahrain Petroleum Company, Bobco, in cooperation with the National Oil and Gas Authority, with the support of a number of international and Gulf oil companies, and in the presence of a large number of experts and engineers to discuss the technological processors fuel oil remaining in the petroleum refining industry. The Minister expressed appreciation for the efforts of the organizers and overcoming the difficulties and in hosting successful events that contribute to the development of exchange of information, experience and a review of the best practices in all areas and disciplines of the relationship. He said that stimulus operations are at the core of all refineries and petrochemical plants which are witnessing an increase in demand for the catalyst in the global markets. 
The minister added that the program in the conference includes a number of important topics in the world oil industry at the present time. This conference witnessed many participants from specialized technicians and engineers from various local, regional and international companies specialized in the field of catalyst markets, as well as the presence of a number of researchers and scholars of different countries of the world. A delegation representing the legitimate Yemeni government is expected to arrive in Sweden today in preparation for the start of the UN peace consultations expected tomorrow. The release of the prisoners and detainees will be the first achievement of these consultations as both the parties had earlier agreed on prisoners exchange deal. This was negotiated by UN Special Envoy to Yemen, Martin Griffiths. After its repeated threats to disrupt other countries' oil refineries shipment through the Gulf, its Washington presses ahead with efforts to halt Iranian oil exports, the United States responded to Iran where it dismissed any possibility of disru disruption in the navigation movement and rejected Tehran's provocations in the region. U.S. Representative for Iran Policy Brian Hook dismissed Rouhani's threat, noting that Iran does not control the Strait of Hermes. Hook said the strait is an international waterway and the United States will continue to work with its partners to ensure freedom of navigation and free flow of commerce. Meanwhile, the United States urged the UN Security Council to condemn Iran's ballistic missile test, which it described as violation of UN resolution. The council met behind closed doors at the request of France and Britain, which along with the United States have accused Iran of test firing a ballistic missile on Saturday. U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley said Iran's recent ballistic missile test was dangerous and concerning, but not surprising. 